Elrond, often labelled as one of the worst T3 commanders. However, is he underrated or is he a waste of an investment? Let's take a deeper look. Hey guys, and welcome to the HJW Gaming Channel. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down Elrond, just showing you some of his stats and my recommended build. If you enjoy this video, please drop a like, please subscribe, and if you want, please leave a comment to let me know what I can do better in future. I really appreciate all you guys' support. Into the video. Elrond is a Season 1 Tier 3 Commander. He can have his respect increased, either by gaining his invitation, or by getting the Meruvor item. Elrond is listed as a support commander, meaning that at level 20 you gain plus 25 focus and also an additional 5 skill points. He is of the elven race and also does have some healing abilities. His might has a base stat of 94, which increases at 1.88 per level. He has a base focus of 99, which increases at 1.98 focus per level and a base speed of 85, increasing at 1.23 per level. These are actually fantastic stats for a commander and really help with buffing his armies. His unique item, if you bring him to rank 10 and have the available Mithril, is the Hadafang. This item is actually a fantastic item, particularly with the build that we're going to use today. What it does is it boosts his might and his focus equally, but it also boosts two of the most important stats for an army supporting commander, particularly those using 100 troop compositions. So he gains plus HP for elves, which means that for each unit it gains one HP to begin with, obviously boosted up to three as you upgrade the item. So this means per 100 troops you can actually gain an additional 300 HP. And then additionally, you have the same with attack, so all of your army could have per 100 troops 300 bonus HP and 300 bonus attack, which is a huge, huge boost. The buff on this item is the Throng Cleaver. This again is a fantastic, fantastic boost as it deals damage to all enemies and it also carries the pursuit effect. Whilst it might not seem like commander damage is that great for Elrond, it definitely is once you add this effect as he does get a very good might stat by the end. Now onto his skill tree and let's talk through some of his skills. So his first respect one skill tree starts with the skill Lord of Imladris. This initially deals 10.6% bonus physical damage. Once fully maximized, this will deal 160% physical damage and prioritize targeting ranged units. Personally, I do not feel this skill is very good as it deals very limited damage despite hitting two targets. The hitting ranged units is fairly reasonable but not that great of a buff. The only reason you would take this skill is in order to get to its sub skills. The first sub skill of Lord of Imladris is the Rush skill. This hits one enemy initially for 34.2% physical damage and when maximized will deal 240% damage. This hits on the first round and then has a one round cooldown, so will hit every other round. This amount of damage dealing is minor, plus I would recommend building Elrond instead as a troop support commander rather than commander damage commander, as there's better commanders for that. Therefore, I would not recommend running the rush skill. The second subtree of Lord of Imladris is the Convener skill tree. This is one of the best skills that Elrond currently has. What this means is in the first two rounds all of your allied units first up gain initiative which means that they can act first in the round which is excellent as it means they can deal damage before they've received damage because of course if you receive damage you'll lose a number of troops and therefore lose an amount of damage that you would do. On top of that, you also gain a 75% chance to gain follow-up each round in these two rounds. What follow-up means is it could allow your units to have a second attack this round. Considering this applies to all units, 
and the elven units we look at deal quite large amount of damage gaining follow-up means that you can deal an enormous amount of damage in the first two rounds to give yourself an early head start against the opponent i would recommend running this skill in almost all builds the second rank one skill tree for elrond begins with the half elven tree this and its sub skills recently received a buff which is what's brought elrond to the forefront of being potentially viable so what this does is this will boost all allies defense and speed for each allied men unit present and it will also boost all allies damage for each elven unit present when maximized these buffs count as 10 defense and speed for each men and damage plus 10 percent for each elven unit present and you also gain plus 10 might and 10 focus whilst plus 10 defense and speed seems a little bit meh the plus 10 percent damage for each elven unit is fantastic as if you combine three elven units you can get plus 30 percent damage which allows for huge damage output from already strong damaging elven units the first sub skill of the half elven skill tree is the boon skill similar to half elven this was recently buffed and definitely makes elrond stronger so this skill applies to all allied units and during battle you will randomly receive one of the following buffs uh, initially this will be physical damage received minus 2.8 percent or physical damage dealt plus 2.8 percent when maximized this skill can give you up to 20 percent damage reduction or 20% bonus physical damage. Whichever one of these skills pings is definitely a fantastic skill. Ideally in the first few rounds you would hope that it would be the physical damage bonus particularly when combined with the follow-up of convener. However receiving less physical damage can never be a bad thing either. Just want to make sure you combine your troops so that you have physical damaging troops and try to avoid coming up against a commander that deals focus damage as of course this will not reduce the focus damage dealt and the second skill under the half elven skill tree is the coalition skill this skill has again two effects split between men and elves so for men you initially have a 10.7 percent chance of dealing the highest damage which increases to 70 percent when fully maxed out and elves have a 10.7 percent chance to gain initiative which again goes up to 70 percent when maximized as we're going to be using an elven army this isn't a particularly great skill as initiative you already have in the first two rounds as a result of taking convener if you choose to do so and initiative in later rounds doesn't matter quite as much men units typically don't have a huge spread in their damage so buffing them to the highest damage isn't an enormous buff and doesn't give a huge amount of bonus troop damage so it's likely in your builds you'll choose not to use this skill for our Ron's rank three skills we have a variation of the white council tree so this tree is present on many good side commanders and can be useful when fighting evil so initially the white council skill uh, grants all allied units first three instances of damage received minus 1.2 percent when maximized this will grant the first three instances of damage received minus 19 percent and the damage reduction effect will trigger an additional time so the first four times your units take damage this is reduced by 20 percent modified by the focus stat whilst damage reduction is always a good thing it's a fairly negligible effect without a large number of skill points being invested so i wouldn't recommend maxing out this skill tree the first sub skill of elrond's rank 3 tree is the high alert skill this again is one of the best skill trees when fighting against evil the reason for this being that it reduces the burn and poison damage received initially by 7.1 percent but when maximized up to 50 percent this makes elrond much much better at fighting particularly commanders that use these types of damage such as the witch king with burn damage or sunind with poison damage the second sub skill for elrond under the white council tree is a slight variation from other white council commanders in the champion of light skill this grants all allies 
bonus damage against orcs, urukai, and trolls by 4%. This increases to 30% when fully skilled out. The final rank 5 skill tree for Elrond starts with Vilia's Ringbearer. This is one of Elrond's best skills and I would definitely recommend getting him to respect 5 if you plan on using him. So this skill initially boosts all elf allied units damage by 1.6%. When maximised this grants plus 25% damage to all elf units and also increases Elrond's focus by 15%. This is a fantastic skill just to base boost the damage of all of your troops. The first sub skill under the Villiers Ringbearer skill tree is Rapid Healing and is Elrond's only healing skill. Whilst initially this might look like a fantastic skill, healing melee units by 5.7%, going up to 40% when maximised each round, this actually is not as great as it looks as most elven units, particularly the ones that deal damage, are not melee units, they're in fact range units. Therefore I would not recommend using this skill as it seems to be a waste of 7 skill points when you could instead buff your troops damage in another way instead. The only time I would recommend using this is if you're using a troop composition that consists of more than one melee unit, so more than just the usual herald. If you use something like keepers, then I would recommend running this skill to help keep your keepers alive. And finally we have the Starlight skill. This works very similar to the Champion of Light skill in that it gives bonus damage against enemy Orcs, Urukai and Trolls by increasing their damage received by 2%. The slight difference between this and Champion of Light is that Champion of Light granted all of your allies bonus damage against these units, whereas Starlight changes their damage received, so this means they also gain bonus damage from damage dealt by the commander. So, now we've discussed each skill, let me go through my build recommendation for Elrond. This is a Respect 5 build, so if you want to use Elrond to his full capability, you will have to invest at least enough to get him up to Respect 5. So, first up, I recommend maximising the Villiers Ringbearer skill. This is for the affirmationed just base damage increase for all elven units, which is fantastic when using an all elven army. The sub skills, however, I would leave untouched, as I feel like particularly the Orcs and Urukai increase just isn't worth it and also the heal doesn't give enough healing unless using the Keeper unit. The next skill tree I would invest in is the first Respect 1 skill tree, Lord of Imladris. I would not maximise this however, I would just put 14 points into this. The reason for this is, is that the skill itself and its bonus once you get it to 15 points is not that great. We are only using it to get our next investment which is the first sub skill convener. We're doing this for the previously mentioned reason of getting initiative in the first two rounds and also the awesome opportunity to get follow up so 75% chance in the first two rounds so we can deal enormous troop damage in those first two rounds which hopefully will sway the fight in our favour. Next up I would recommend investing in Elrond's bottom rank 1 skill tree. So with half elven I would put 15 points into this. Again this is just for the flat damage buff whilst using elven units, further increasing our damage. And then I would recommend putting 7 points into the boon skill. Again this is awesome because it can reduce our physical damage by 20% and also allow us to deal 20% extra physical damage. So Either way, it's going to boost our troops pretty well. Any bonus points you have once levelled up Elrond or additional respect points, I'd recommend putting into the White Council skill tree just to get a little bit of extra uh, damage reduction. If you're fighting evil, maybe try and spread these evenly between White Council and High Alert to reduce that burn damage. It's worth also pointing out that the order in which you place Elrond's skill points does not affect their activation order, so put points in whichever order you want. Personally, I prefer to start by putting the 15 points 
into half elven and boon and then I move on to maximising Villiers ring bearer before finally coming back and putting the points into Lord of Imladris and then Convener. However, that's completely up to you. And that's the end of the skill build, so we'll move on to the best equipment for Elrond. With this, I'll recommend both the best superior equipment and also the best legendary equipment. Essentially with his equipment, however, if you don't have the exact items I specify here, try to look for equipment which buffs your elf units further and also potentially could give them a stun or madness resist, as of course Elrond does not have any skills that allow for this. So first up, I'll go through my recommended superior equipment. For a weapon, I would recommend using the Mirkwood Bow. The sub skill for this you want is Elves Strength. However, if you do not have Elves Strength, Ranged Might could also do, but will not do quite as much damage as Elves Strength. The reasoning behind recommending this weapon is that the, uh, the weapon's base stats grant additional might and speed, which doesn't matter too much, but the main thing is it grants an additional attack to your ranged units in your army. So you get plus one ranged attack to begin with, and if you fully maximise the weapon, you can get plus three attack. In addition to this, once fully refined, the Elves' Strength buff will also grant an additional 9% damage to all of your elf units. So therefore, the Mirkwood Bow grants a fantastic buff to the damage of all of your troops. For superior armour, you have quite a wide range of choices. However, my preference is the Scale Mail with the Melee Vigor boost. Reason for this is you gain Might and Focus, but also you gain additional defence for your army, which can help particularly your uh, melee units stay alive, which again is why we're using the Melee Vigor buff. So Elven melee units particularly are quite squishy. They don't have a massive amount of defense or HP, so can die quite quickly. Using the scale mail, you can make them slightly more tanky, so you can take more hits and therefore protect the very squishy ranged units behind them. When fully maximized, the scale mail will grant plus 15 defense, and melee vigor will reduce melee damage by 6%. For headgear, I would recommend the trapper's hood with either the ranged vigor or the Hysteria buff. The reason we choose the Trapper's Hood is, again, you get bonus focus and speed, but mainly that your army can gain up to plus three attack for your ranged units, so making them, again, fantastic damage dealers. The Ranged Vigor buff can make your ranged unit take slightly less damage. However, the Hysteria effect, in my opinion, is superior. This means that every two rounds, when fully refined, you have a 100% chance of inflicting madness for one round. So this can mean that on top of your troops dealing damage, your opponent's troops have a chance of dealing damage to themselves if they don't have madness immunity. This is one of the best effects in the game, so I definitely recommend using it if you have this available. And finally, for your superior accessory, I would recommend running the Harp of Lothlorien with either the Elves' Strength or the Hunter's Mark effect. Which one of these you choose will depend upon which commanders you think you're going to be facing. Hunter's Mark, for the first three rounds, grants all of your troops 90% chance, when fully refined, to gain pursuit status. This is particularly good when facing against commanders that use evasion a lot, such as Gil-Galad or also Gandalf the Grey. So fighting good side, the Hunter's Mark is probably the superior option. However, Elves' Strength grants a flat damage bonus when fully refined of 9%, so further increases the damage your elves can do. Against evil, this is probably the best choice, or against commanders that don't use evasion. The item itself, the reason we're using it, is mainly for those two effects. However, it does also grant bonus focus and additional speed for your army. Now, for those of you big spenders, or those that have got lucky with equipment draws, I'll go through the legendary equipment that I would recommend for Elrond. For the weapon, I would recommend the Elven White Knife. This is always one of the best items for commanders that use Elven units, particularly if it has the Might of Elves buff. So the reason we'd use this is it grants a flat increase to the commander's might of up to 36, 
but when fully strengthened, it can also grant additional attack to your elven units of plus six, which is enormous. On top of that, the Might of Elves buff will further increase the damage your elves do by up to 9%. This will give a huge damage output increase to your elven units, so if you have this available, definitely get it. And if you have other white knives with the different effect, I definitely recommend keeping them so you can refine in future if you get the correct one. For your legendary armour, I personally would recommend the High Elf Hauberk. Again, this is just because of the additional buffs it can give to elven units. I would recommend having the buff of either Fortitude of Elves or Resistance. So the reason we want to use the High Elf Hauberk is it grants some good commander boosts, additional might, focus and speed, but mainly that it grants additional defence to your elven army. This goes up to 15 defence, so similar to the scale mail. The buffs, however, are very useful, so Fortitude of Elves will reduce the damage taken by your elven units by up to 9% when fully refined. And Resistance is one of the best traits you can use if you're fighting the evil side, as when fully refined, you can reduce burn, poison and focus damage by up to 30%. So if you have this available, personally, I would keep the Resistance effect. For headgear, you have a lot of different options for you. The Trapper's Hood, a superior, is very good again if you wanted to maintain this. However, legendary-wise, I would use either the Cask of the Submerged Isle with the Aegis effect, or a High Elf Helmet with Fortitude of Elves. The Cask of the Submerged Isle with Aegis, when fully refined, is probably the best helmet in the game. Reason for this being is on top of the additional might and focus your commander gets, it gives you full resistance to both madness and stun, which are very, very popular with a lot of commanders, so will make you resistant to almost every other commander. So if you have this fully available and refined, it is the best helmet in the game. However, if you don't have this, the High Elf Helmet is also very good. The reason we would use the High Elf Helmet is that similar to the Hauberk, you can gain additional might, focus and speed for your commander and also up to 15 bonus defense for your elves. The Fortitude of Elves skill again is the same as one available on the Hauberk, so you can reduce damage by up to 9%. Combining both of these two can grant up to 30% bonus defense and almost 20% damage reduction, which would be enormous for helping keep your troops alive and therefore deal more damage. And finally for accessory, again having Hunter's Mark on the Harp of Lothlorien is very good but if you want to use a legendary accessory I would recommend the Silver Harp of Rivendell, the effect on this being Might of Elves. The reason we'd use this is again you get Commander Might and Focus and up to 15% army defence. So you see a trend here, if you combine all of the defence boosting items you can get up to 45 bonus defence which is massive. On top of that, if you have the Might of Elves skill, you can increase the damage being dealt by your Elves by up to 9%. Essentially, with Elrond's gear, you're always looking to buff either the damage of your Elves or to reduce the damage they will take. So, into troop combinations. With Elrond's troop combinations, you do have quite a few options and it does vary on the gear that you are using on him. I would recommend using full elven troops, assuming that the gear you're using does boost elfin troops. Particularly, you will need some defense boost to help keep your heralds at the front alive. The first troop composition I would recommend is just kind of a standard troop composition. Bear in mind, all of these numbers are based on a level 50 commander. However, I will also give the percentages so that you can use a similar troop composition at lower levels. So as your melee unit, I would recommend, of course, using the Herald, and I would use 3,000 of these as your frontline tank. This equates to 40% of Elrond's command. The remaining 45 command, I would split evenly between Sentinels and Bow Knights. I personally quite like to use 2,500 Sentinels and then 1,000 Bow Knights. I find this gives me a very good balance. Against evil, you may at times want to choose to instead use more bow knights, 
to counter the number of trolls being used so of course to get the large unit buff. If you are playing as Lothlorien you may also want to switch out one of the Bow Knights or the Sentinels. Personally I would prefer to switch out the Bow Knights due to cost and switch them out instead for March Wardens as March Wardens are of course a superior unit dealing fantastic damage and also carrying the pursuit effect. If you have the troops available I'd probably slightly switch the ratios around as well so maybe use behind your 3000 Heralds, 2000 Sentinels and then 1250 March Wardens which should give you huge damage output. Another build option, if you do not have gear which is buffing the Elves defence and therefore your Heralds at the front are fairly weak, you can swap these out instead and use 1500 Cataphracts as your frontline tank. However be aware these of course will not have as many buffs from Elrond's skills. But they can still do a very good job of tanking the damage so that then your units behind, uh, your Sentinels and Bow Knights, can deal a lot of damage. They are of course very expensive units so use these with care. Heralds are definitely superior if you have elven troop buffs. A fourth build option if you choose to try it is if you have keepers available to you. If this is the case I'd recommend just sticking to a similar composition to that given in the first set. So 40% or 3000 heralds, 2500 sentinels and then I would use the remaining on the keepers, so 2,000 keepers. These keepers can then deal bonus focus damage, which will be very useful against other commanders that mitigate uh, physical damage. However, of course, be aware they will not get the buff to physical damage given by uh, Elrond's skill tree. Now, just to finish up, I'm just going to talk through a couple of battle reports using Elrond and just show exactly how much potential he can have. The first report I've gone for was sent to me by a member of my United Faction who was very surprised how much damage this Elrond managed to do to his Gil-Galad. As you can see he has fantastic gear. The Elven Dirk is another great weapon for Elven Commanders as it has that ranged damage buff. The High Elf Hauberk, as recommended earlier, boosting the defence and providing resistance. The Hunter's Guide, another fantastic helm with Aegis, two times refined and four times strengthened, also giving bonus range damage. And finally the Harp of Lothlorien, this time with Elves Strength rather than the Pursuit Effect with Hunter's Mark. Troop wise you can see they've gone very very similar, uh, both going with T4s and the Heralds and the Sentinels. The Gilgalad build as well you can see is pretty much the perfect meta build. So this is a very very powerful Gilgalad which a lot of commanders would not be able to lay a finger on. However despite this, the Elrond actually managed to deal a huge amount of damage. Okay, it lost the fight, but it left uh, the Gil-Galad very, very injured with only 85k left. As you can see, Elrond's gear is far inferior. It has the Elven White Knife with the right effect to begin with, but it's not refined and only two times strengthened. Uh, Armour-wise, the Elven Cloak definitely is nowhere near as good as the High Elf Hauberk. It does grant bonus XP and it does have the resistance effect. However, it only grants focus rather than might, and ideally we'd rather have some more might on this Elrond, just to boost that damage a little bit more. Helm-wise, he also has the Hunter's Guide with Aegis. However, instead of being four times strengthened, two times refined, this is only two, uh, two times strengthened, one times refined. This makes a massive difference, particularly against Gil-Galad, in dodging those stuns, and also reduces the range damage. And finally, it does have a Harp of Lothlorien with Hunter's Mark, again the right effect. But as it's only two times refined, it only grants 45% chance of pursuit, which I think was probably the issue in the first few rounds against this Gil-Galad. So as you can see, the gear is far, far inferior to that of the Gil-Galad. Uh, he's running the meta build that I recommended earlier, with maybe one more point in Lord of Imladris. But yeah, the troop composition is very, very similar with Herald, Sentinels and his T4, this time March Wardens. If you check out the report, Gil-Galad's gear did exactly what it says on the tin, massively boosting the range damage, meaning that there was massive damage coming from both the Sentinels and the Noldor Longshots. However, with Elrond, you'll see there's an enormous amount of damage being dealt by the uh, March Wardens. reason for this is that the pursuit effect that the March Wardens carry mean that he could hit through Gil-Galad's avoidance. You can see from the low amount of damage done by the Sentinels, the harp wasn't refined enough to help with this. 
So you definitely want to carry a pursuit effect all the time. And if they had, then I think this Elrond would have won. Now under this second report, you'll see exactly what an Elrond can do when equipped correctly against a Gilgalad. So here we have a very meta again Gilgalad set up, this time without T4s. And the, uh, the Elrond's actually gone for an all ranged build, going with Sentinels, Bow Knights and March Wardens. If we take a quick scan through Elrond's equipment, we'll see exactly why he did better in this fight. Skill wise, the build is almost exactly the same again. Meta build with one more point in Lord of Imladris, just to get that little might bonus. So the weapon this player has gone for is the Lang. It's very similar to the Elven White Knife in that it has the Might of Elves effect and does boost might. However, I find that the HP boost is not as good as the attack boost given by the Elven White Knight, though still a very good option. Chest piece wise, he has gone for the High Elf Hauberk. Which is again brilliant as it boosts that defense and helps keep your elven units alive. Again this also has the resistance effect. Helm wide is the same as last time, it's the hunter's guide, two times strengthened, one times refine. So this will help a little bit with Gilgalad stuns but ideally you'd want it a little bit more refined. And finally for the accessory he has the again the harp of Lothlorien with hunter's mark. This time it's four times refined, so you have a massive 75% chance of the pursuit effect. Likely is what made a massive difference versus Gilgalad, as you're able to hit him despite his avoidance. But let's quickly check out the damage stats and see what we think. Again, the thing to consider is he is using March Wardens, which also have pursuit, and also is using T4s when the other opponent is not. Admittedly, the Gilgalad on the other side isn't the best build. It appears to be a Respect 3 build if we quickly open this up, and also has far inferior gear. So you're seeing again, compared to the last one where Elrond had the inferior gear and only just lost out, this time the Gilgalad has the inferior gear, but instead loses out massively. So you can see how much damage Elrond really can put down if you give him the right equipment. The gear isn't necessarily bad on this Gilgalad, it just needs a lot more strengthening and a couple of refines to really make it top tier. And ideally the player would get Gilgalad to respect 5 to open up another skill tree and a lot more damage. So looking at the damage being done by Elrond's units, you can see that this time the March Wardens again have done a huge amount of damage. However, both the Bow Knights and Sentinels have also done large damage. This is because they are able to hit Gilgalad through the pursuit effect granted to them by the superior equipment. And finally, I'll just quickly show you this report against Sauron to show what he can do against evil outside of the Gilgalad showcase I've shown previously. The thing to note when facing up against evil is that it very, very much for Elrond is dependent on the equipment you have for the opponent that you face. So you have to make sure that you're matched up appropriately. So for example, again, an Aegis Helm is amazing in this situation as it does allow you to have some resistance to the madness and the... Uh, and the stuns that can be inflicted by evil commanders. In this case, I believe Elrond also has a very focus resisting chest piece just to make sure that Sauron deals less damage. But as you can see, Sauron is significantly higher level than Elrond, and yet Elrond still wins out, and he's also against the uh, Variax T4 unit. If we specifically take a look at damage, you'll see that all of Elrond's units, all the elves, dealt some magnificent damage due to the number of buffs he's giving them, so it doesn't matter which unit you're buffing, you just need to mainly just make sure that your resistances in your armour match up against the opponent. Primarily however, I would say that in general that Elrond definitely performs better against good commanders, where you don't need to have quite as many uh, specific counters, for example madness or stuns, generally good side just uses stuns unless they have like the trapper's hood for example, which only affects the first few rounds. Against evil, it can be a bit of a coin toss unless you have an 100% effective Aegis Helm. And versus Witch King, you definitely need the coin tosses to come in your favour or to be higher level to win those. However, you can still have very favourable results against him. And on that note, I'm going to end this very comprehensive and in-depth look at the mixed skill guide for Elrond. If you've enjoyed and watched all the way through, thank you very much. And please drop a like and drop a comment to let me know what I can do better in the future. And if you want to see more of these, please subscribe and I'll try and upload regularly to make sure I give you all the best information so you can perform best at Lord of the Rings Ride to War. 
And on that note, I've been HJW Gaming, and I'm out.